Are you ready to go off the beaten path? The Seaborn Pursuit is designed for expedition adventures. Hey everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie. Welcome to the Seaborn Pursuit. One of the big reasons you book the Seaborn Pursuit is to be able to go into the Zodiacs and head out to places you could never get to on a larger cruise ships. Those expeditions start right here on deck three in the Seaborn Pursuit. So you have lockers. These are mostly for the cold weather excursions, so you'll be able to keep your waterproof boots and gear here. For the warm weather excursions, we didn't really use this area. Through that door is where you board the Zodiacs. You head down, I think it's about eight or 10 stairs to a platform where the sailors will help you into the Zodiacs. And then here are the boot rinsing stations so that you can clean your boots. Now we're going to head up to deck four to check out some of the dining options. So this is the restaurant. It's open for breakfast and dinner every day and lunch on sea days. It's a beautiful, refined area, but I want you to take a closer look as we go through the dining room. You'll notice there are not a lot of tables just for two. So I want you to be prepared. You may want to share during your expedition cruise just so that you can get into dinner a little bit faster. They will try to find you a table for just the two of you if that's your preference, but you may have to wait a little bit longer. There's also an alternative up on the colonnade and we'll cover that a little bit later when we get to deck seven. The dining is formal, it's lovely, they do an excellent job. Just off the restaurant, you're gonna find the main galley. So this galley serves the entire ship with some smaller little grills available. Also off the main restaurant is going to be the submarine garage. Yes, the Seaborn Pursuit has two submarines. A ride costs about $1,000 per person depending on the voyage you're on. There's pilots on board and they usually only take it out in the Arctic areas and the Caribbean. We didn't have it in the Amazon because it was just too murky. Passing the aft elevator bank and heading towards the forward of the ship, we'll find the expedition team's desk. There's usually a crew member there from the expedition team to answer any questions or help you schedule excursions. You may want to bring your own bottle or they have one available in your cabin so you can fill up your water bottle to help eliminate the use of plastics. This is the expedition lounge, the home of a lot of beautiful fireside chats, as well as the boutique that carries souvenir items as well as things you may need on your journey. Let's say if you forgot your waterproof pants. There is a bar here with a great crew of bartenders and then heading again towards the front we will find the Discovery Center. So this takes the place of the theater for the evening shows but this is where your daily briefings will take place so the expedition team can let you know what's coming, what the schedule is going to be. So each day there'll be a briefing, they'll show you where we are, what the plan is, for the next day or that day. It's also the site of all these incredible lectures that the expedition team does. Behind or more forward of the Discovery Center, you're going to find a hallway with some great art. I actually love the art throughout the ship. There was even a fun art scavenger hunt that the cruise director put on one day. I recommend doing that if you like kind of looking around for different art pieces. The studio is located here. So this is where the ship's photographer kind of sets up. They have open hours where you can come in and speak to them with any questions you have. You can upload and edit your own photos. There's different presentations about how to improve your photography taking. And then they have some things like lens cleaning gear in case you need that for your own camera. Here's the forward set of elevators. There are two sets of elevators on board uh, in addition to the two sets of stairs. Heading up to deck five, we're going to head towards the back again. So on deck five, the forward area is mostly cabins. This is where you're gonna find your guest laundry. The guest laundry is included for do-it-yourself. You'll find the irons and the steamers in here because you're not allowed to bring those on board. The four washers and dryers as well as soap is available. So everything you need. And you are going to be very appreciative of that guest laundry if you go out on some of the expeditions. So in Natal, as part of our Amazon cruise, we went on this incredible sand dunes excursions, but we definitely needed to do laundry after that. 
Heading back on deck five towards the aft, we find the hotel manager's office as well as a meeting room. The meeting room had small events that took place in here, also meetings for the crew and the officers. You'll find a group of board games here. So for those C days, if you wanna try your hand at a little Monopoly or Clue or Checkers or Scrabble, you're gonna find it here in the meeting room just across from the hotel manager's office. Coming around, you'll find the bathrooms. The bathrooms are genuinely in this location on all the decks, so it's gonna be right by the aft elevators. You'll find ladies, gentlemen, and then a handicap accessible. So if you're ever looking for it on one of the decks, just head to the aft elevators and it should be close to there. We are heading into the colonnade. Oops, I think I said before it was on deck seven. It's actually on deck five, sorry. So this is your little more casual eating area, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. It has a buffet for breakfast and lunch and then a la carte dining for dinner with the exception of one very special chef's market buffet during your journey. So here is a peek at the buffet breakfast. Now you'll also have a menu at your table for both breakfast and lunch, and it'll include a daily special. So always ask what the daily special is. They had a lot of great options available. Some of them are off the restaurant menu for breakfast and lunch. So you get a little try a lot of the options available. You can also order eggs made to order, uh, eggs benedicts, waffles. So lots of options there on the small menu that you're gonna find on your tables for breakfast and lunch. This is one of the morning egg specials. It was this really good omelet. The eggs Florentine are not to be missed. This was the best eggs Florentine I've ever had. So heading into lunch, you see we have a lot more salad options. They made these this great seafood salad every day that I absolutely loved. I also really like having shrimp cocktail available. And then of course they had churros one day, which I thought was fun, even though it was an Amazon sailing. There's both indoor and and outdoor seating available at the colonnade. This was great on our warm weather Amazon sailing. We did talk to some of the crew members and they said that during the Antarctic season, the outdoor seating may not be available just due to the rough seas. The patio bar is a very fun place to hang out, especially if Butch is your bartender. For dinner, the colonnade moves to a la carte or ordering off a menu. They all have a theme. So during Taste of Asia, I had this incredible Thai green curry. The pasta is available anytime, any night. You definitely want to order it. It's terrific. The ahi tuna is lovely on board. So any kind of ceviche or tartare is great. The gnocchi with a pesto sauce is a wonderful option. And then the beef tenderloin was absolutely delicious. You can order caviar anytime at the patio bar. So if you have a little craving while you're by the pool, definitely ask Butch to order it. The patio also hosts some special events like our equator crossing ceremonies, or they'll set up you know, special displays featuring different cocktails. Heading up the stairs here after the after the ship, we are now on deck six, which is just outside Seaborne Square. This was a very popular area to do puzzles while drinking your morning coffee. On each deck, they have a little basket with sunscreen as well as glass cleaner wipes, which I just thought was a really lovely touch. Here in Seaborne Square is where you're gonna find guest services as well as the future cruise consultant. Discounts are available if you book your next cruise while on board or place a future cruise deposit. Here in Seaborne Square, the expedition team would have daily office hours where you could look for animals and just find out more about them. Seaborne Square Coffee Shop is a great place to find a sweet treat or a nice grab and go breakfast. They also have ice cream during the day. So this yogurt display switches to ice cream in the evenings and they are different flavored ice creams from the one that are in the colonnade. So if you love ice cream, this is the place to be. Now we're heading towards the front of the ship on deck six. So we're gonna pass through a bunch of rooms again, head down the hallway, head all the way forward, and here you're gonna find the bow lounge that has a great map showing you where all the seaborne ships are at any given time. This is another location where the expedition team will have office hours, again, looking for wildlife, or you can just chat with them about their experience or any questions you may have. It's a lovely, quiet space, usually, if you wanted to read or do a puzzle. And then one really neat thing they have available 
are these TV screens that show you all of the nautical information. It's almost like you get to be the captain and get to see the information that the captain is getting about the location, the currents, the wind. It does block the view a little bit if you were sitting in these couches. So that's kind of a bummer. So it's a trade-off. It's cool to have this available and see kind of what the captain sees. But then if you are sitting in that, those seats, not a great view. There's coffee available here, little treats, as well as sodas throughout the day. And then here's a close-up look at what you would see on those screens. So the different currents and winds. There's a door outside to get you all the way out on the bow. This may be closed if it's too windy or too rocky, but it's a great place to watch heading into port. Now we're going to head to deck seven and check out a cabin. So this is a veranda cabin. You do need a card. We use a Starbucks card to turn the electricity on. Right when you enter, you're going to find the bathroom. So it has two sinks, technically, I guess two faucets and lots of shelves for storage it is has a freestanding bathtub with its own shower sprayer and then you have a clothesline as well as extra towels so here's a close-up of those faucets you have soap dishes washcloths and then lots of shelves they give you a lot of body washes to choose from they gave us four different scents that so we could pick to see which was our favorite as you can see we were cycling through all of them it's molten brown amenities including shampoo and conditioner and then we had really good water pressure your life jackets will be in your cabin and you will wear them often you do have to wear them anytime you're on the zodiac a lot of the ports we had we had to take our zodiac to shore so you'll definitely want to get used to wearing your life jacket down here we didn't use this it's for cold weather sailings it's a heater so you could hang up your jacket or any pants or anything that got wet to help it dry i love the hooks the hooks that um shirt was on we brought our own uh, metallic hooks magnetic hooks to put up there's more hooks in the closet you have slippers in those two bags as well as a hair dryer lots of hanging space there's shorter hanging for tops and pants and then longer hanging for dressing there is a safe in the room as well as drawers on either side of the bed there are outlets which you know if you watch my other video is something i absolutely love you have your own reading light you can see here there's a curtain that goes between the main living room you have your own tv facing the bed and then another cabinet with even more storage available those walking sticks to the left were available on board there is a limited quantity and i don't know that they would be great on ice so if you need a walking stick for icy conditions, I would definitely bring your own, bring the one you're used to. We also got a little bag that we could use on board. This is a really comfortable sofa and you have a nice little table there. That's great for in-room dining. There is a very large room service list for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Those silver bottles are the provided water bottles. I still recommend bringing your own insulated water bottle so it doesn't condense. Your cabin steward refills these water bottles daily, so you always have plenty of water. You also have a customizable mini fridge in your room, so you can get two bottles of hard liquor and then sodas, beers, waters, and a bottle of champagne when you check in. You just need to specify your preferences in advance. You also get a pair of binoculars, a very nice pair of binoculars. You have plugs next to the desk and then heading out to the balcony. You can see it's a decent sized balcony. You get the chair as well as the footrest and it's very private. You can't see anyone above you or to the sides of you. Heading back out on deck seven, we're going to come to the spa area. There is a nice spa on board. Spa services are not included on Seabourn. You will need to pay extra and make reservations for any of the spa experiences you'd like to have. You can make those in advance. You can make them through the app. Um, you can make them really anytime on board based on availability. So here's a peek inside one of the massage rooms. They also have facials and then heading closer to the back of the ship, we're going to find the fitness center and locker room. So male and female locker rooms, each of them have their own saunas with a great view. So I think this is probably going to be quite busy on the cold weather sailings. Um, in the Amazon, I just stepped outside, didn't really need a sauna. But here in the fitness center, you have everything you would need to get in a good workout, your treadmills, ellipticals, free weights, 
There is also a lot of classes on board. Here's the beauty salon, so if you needed to have your hair blown out, and then here's the studio where the onboard trainer offers classes. I went to a great stretching class each morning. They had abs classes, yoga classes, so lots of options to stay fit. And then here's the deck seven aft overlook. So that's another good place if you're looking for a place to hang out. Heading up to deck eight, we're going to find two of the lounges. So this is the club. There was live music here each evening and it was a great place to hang out pre-dinner. You have the faux fireplace there. Yep, that's not a real fireplace. Fire and cruise ships don't mix, but we had a guitar player, a piano player, and then here was the bar. So usually it has stuff and the sushi. So there was sushi here each evening between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. all included. And you have another deck area here at the back. So basically most of the aft floors have decks. So if you're looking for something, this has two hot tubs. Well, they weren't super hot, but that was good for our sailing. And this is also the smoking area. So there is a bar out here, deck eight aft. You are able to smoke here. You can also enjoy the two different whirlpools on our sailing. This was really popular at sunset because it just seemed like we were always sailing away from the sun as it set. So that was a great spot. Also a great spot for um, all kinds of good pictures. Heading forward on deck eight from the club, this is the walking track area. So if you did wanna walk outside, it would be here on deck eight. You come across the Zodiac storage area with the huge crane that lowers the Zodiacs down along the side of the ship. Now I've seen some complaints online about how much room the Zodiacs take, take up on deck, but here's the truth. The reason you are on this ship for most people is these Zodiacs, is this chance to get out and see wildlife that you would never be able to see on this size of a luxury ship. I also think it's fun to get a behind the scenes peek at how they care for the Zodiacs. Heading forward on deck eight, there's a small staircase that will take you up to deck nine forward. This is another observation area overlooking the bow or the front of the ship. A good spot if you wanna to try to get some further away photographs or check out what's happening as we head into port. Again, this de deck may be closed based on weather conditions. Also deck eight forward, you're gonna find the Constellation Lounge. This was another great space in the evenings. They had a Halloween party here, which was super fun. A duo played here most evenings as opposed to the guitar player or the piano player that played in the club. It's a little bit bigger lounge. You also have a great large oval shaped bar. So if you want more of that, like hanging out at the bar scene, it's gonna be here in this lounge. In the evenings, right before dinner, you also find like a small little snack buffet. So that is the Seaborn Pursuit. What did you think? Are you ready to go on an expedition cruise? And if you've been on her, let me know what were your favorite things.